can. Sold your soul? Can you redeem it? You can get out now. You can get out at any time. If you think that you've sold your soul to the devil, how can you sell something that doesn't belong to you? You turn to the Lord and he's broken the thickest chains I've ever heard of. Believing, say, Lord, save me. You watch Satan run like there's no tomorrow. He's literally going to pick up his skirt and he's going to run. Nine. What's holding atoms together? All matter is composed of atoms. Only in the last hundred years or so has science discovered that everything we see is composed of things that we cannot see. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Look at verse 17. And he, Jesus Christ, is before all things and by him all things consist. He's holding everything in his hand because if he opens up his hands, these atoms they're all going to be going because they just repel from each other this universe as we know it is going to cease to exist eight the paths of the sea prove god's work the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas psalm 107 verses 23 and 24 they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters these see the works of the lord and his wonders in the deep if man did write the bible he would have known about the paths of the seas thousands of years ago matthew murray took god at his word and he actually found them seven what's a coven witch the witch who operates as part of a wider group of witches, perhaps led by a high priestess, who combine their magical powers and skills to create stronger, bigger spells and manifest outcomes for the group and beyond. Coven focuses more on ceremonial and ritualistic magic. Six. Do you know the greatest gift ever given yet? God will never push anybody into salvation. Jesus came, he died, and it's a gift. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. The thing about the works, it just erases so many religions, so many cults off the map. Because God says, it is a gift that I want to give you. If your good works can actually get you to heaven, why did Jesus Christ have to die on that cross? Five. What evil are you into? Evil is an act of preferring. Where there is no will, no volition, there is no evil. Evil is a function of willing. Look at what God says through Jeremiah. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. They have forsaken me. This is the first evil. To forsake God or to want nothing to do with God is actual evil. Second, they have hewn out cisterns for themselves or chosen broken cisterns that can hold no water. That's the second evil. You're going after your own gods. You're creating your own spirituality. You're going out there doing your own thing. You're basically putting water in a busted vase. And God says that's another evil. Evil is choosing anything but God. Four. Jesus warned his followers not to seek signs, explaining that his resurrection, the sign of Jonah, would be the only verifying miracle upon which believers can rely on. Matthew 12, verse 39 and 40. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Three. What do you mean three gospels? Paul is speaking to the believers. I declared unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. The gospel that he preached is not the gospel that Peter was preaching. Peter was preaching a gospel of repentance. It was a gospel of the kingdom of heaven. We are under the gospel of the grace of God. These are two different gospels. If I can blow another fuse, you're going to find the third gospel in the New Testament. In Revelation chapter 14, this is the gospel of the angel preaching the everlasting gospel. What does Paul say about this angel preaching this gospel in Galatians chapter 1? He accurses him because the gospel that's being preached in Revelation is not the same gospel that's being preached in Galatians chapter 1. But everything has its place. Two. The gospel in seconds. In John 3.36 it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. These are the people that have accepted Christ, believing in his death, burial, and resurrection. That is the gospel. I just gave it to you in three seconds. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So again, you choose. One. What is salvation based on? When I hear people say, well, I'm a Lutheran, I'm a Baptist, I'm Episcopalian, I'm an Anglican, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a United Pentecostal, I'm a this, a that, or the other. What are you doing? You're just segregating yourself in one of those groups. 
It has nothing to do with salvation. It has to do with the relationship that you have between you and your God. Your faith has to be based on the person of Jesus Christ. Plus, minus nothing. You know what it says in Acts chapter 16, verse 31? The Philippian jailer asked the question, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he said this, he says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What is it I'm supposed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. Paul was saying, The gospel that I received, I gave to you. According to the scriptures, Christ came, he died, they buried him, and according to the scriptures, he resurrected from the dead. So the gospel, I just gave it to you in five seconds. This gospel is basically believing in a death, burial, and resurrection.